Balls. Right, okay, good. Dude, dude, go. Here comes the maze. Here comes the maze. Balls, balls, balls. He's dead. He's dead. Good go, go, kill him, kill him. You have to go balls. Have to go balls. Have to go balls. Have to go balls. He's gonna hold me. Good silence. Good silence. Back up. Back up. Back up. Bombs. Back up. Bombs. He ult. He ult. Has it. Has it. Has it. Has it. I closed the gate. I closed the gate. Minions are winning. Minions are winning. I thought. We don't know. We don't know. End it. Just hit the dexes. Okay. Good game. Okay. These unknown group of players would come to be known as Team Vulcan. They would go ahead and not only obtain a third place finish at the LCS Spring Playoffs but also qualify for Worlds in the summer. But in the next split, they were last place and got eliminated from the LCS. How did a team that performed exceptionally well in Season 3 fall off a cliff and lose their spot in the series? My name is Kudo and today we'll be looking at the rise and the fall of Team Vulcan. Gets out with 100 HP. The Barry, oh my god! Me. Oh, Bloodwater steals Barry! Win streak. I called it yesterday. I said, any of these teams, every week we've had someone go 3 0. It could be Vulcan, and it is Vulcan. Team Vulcan's roots goes all the way back to this. This is a picture of a goose. Not only is it a picture of a goose, but it is also the logo for Team Picture of a Goose. This team's lineup was Balls at the top lane, Eximili in the jungle, Mandatory Cloud in mid, and Atlanta and Kurtoki in the bot lane when the ADC meta was in set in stone. This team was fairly successful at winning minor tournaments, being able to pick up nearly $2,000 in winnings. This team would also be the first to show off the beginning of the powerful synergy between Man Cloud and Eximili, both the great gangs and the very bad ones. When it does uh, actually is burn his flash, so already Smithy coming up behind only be our friend. Here comes in the jump from Tetrada. Will we see it behind the turret? Smithy is in trouble right now. Lee Sin jumping all over his face. And actually Smithy jumping on top of Lee Sin. Mandatory Cloud will go down and actually Sparta picking up that kill. So it's four to two after what I would consider an unsuccessful dive uh, on the mid turret. So. Throughout Season 2 of League, this roster went through a variety of changes. On February 14, 2012, Team Picture of a Goose got picked up by the German clan MTW to make a North American team. MTW competed in online tournaments, most notably obtaining first place in the National ESL Pro Series Season 3. Due to real life obligations, Kurtoki left the team and MTW was looking for a new support. Zuno was initially brought in as the support, but a conflict happens in which he had to leave the team before competing. For like, maybe a week, and he said he was tired of support. So I told him, well, I don't know what to do about that. Like, it was either we kicked him or he switched with balls, and so he asked balls and the balls switched. And then we had balls on support for a while. And we, like the first week, I would say the first week, we were crushing bottom every game. So balls just basically was like, can I not support? And I'm like, okay. And Zuna didn't want to switch back, so I switched with him for a while. And I had the same problem a couple of weeks later. And then, so we, we switched back, and then Balls got really bored of it, and so we, we came to a, like, a crossroad where it's like, well, what do we do now? Well, Zuna was the first in, or the last in, so he would be the first out. Um, and so we did it that way. Zuna was then replaced by Muffin Cutie. On July 9th, Atlanta left the team and Aphromoot took over as AD Carry. Then the team was acquired by Monomaniac Ferris. Under the Monomaniac Ferris brand, the team tried to qualify for Season 2 Worlds but lost to Team Solo mid in the quarterfinals. After that, Balls left the team to go to Meet Playground and the roster was released until Team Fear picked them up a week later. While on Team Fear, Aphromu left the team to go to Counter Logic Gaming. He and Balls were replaced by Psycho Sid and Zuna. On February 2nd, Team Fear qualified for the inaugural North American League Championship Series, beating out Meat Playground. After the qualifiers, Team Fear's roster was acquired by Team Vulcan. After a whole season of constant acquisitions and changes, the roster was finally settled to the Vulcan organization and brand. Zuna's brother Kenma would be the coach and Nomsan would be the manager. In the beginning of the spring split, Team Vulcan had a terrible showing, losing all games in week 1 and week 2. All those games except when they faced GGU, Vulcan lost control in the early game, giving first blood every single time. 
This allowed their opponents to control the pace of the game and maintain a gold lead to the point where Vulcan could not bounce back. It also didn't help that in the beginning of the split, Vulcan had not yet established their gaming house. Therefore, the necessary time to scrim, analyze VODs, and practice wasn't there compared to the other teams. Vulcan's popularity was also non-existent. Most viewers cheered for any of the so-called top 4, which consist of Counterlogic Gaming, Team Solo Mid, Team Dignitas, and Team Curse. Things looked rough, and it looked like Vulcan was just another bottom tier league team. That was until they faced CLG in week 3. Facing off against their old teammate Aframu, Vulcan upset CLG in a commanding fashion. This was a 35 minute game where Vulcan lost 0 turrets and had complete control of the entire game. Mandatory Cloud was in the spotlight as he had an impressive Nidalee, using those spears to chunk CLG as well as zone them when Vulcan was taking an objective. Finally, Vulcan showed signs of strength and the ability to face off against the top 4 and win. The momentum from the victory led Vulcan to go 3-0 in the week, picking up wins against Complexity and Team Marn. Xmithy was also awarded the MVP of Week 3, however, this spark of momentum was short-lived. Vulcan remained inconsistent. From Week 4 to Week 7, Vulcan won only 4 out of their 12 games. One remarkable game, however, was in Week 6, where Vulcan was able to stage a comeback from CLG when CLG threw inside the Baron Pit. He's gonna get pulled in. He uses his jump, but it doesn't matter. Zuna melts him down. Afro manages to get the castle. Oh, and he's gonna get melted. Muffy Goody taken so low. You can see the Zonya's coming out from Link, but he gets hooked in there. Zuna picks up one, picks up two. He's gonna get the triple kill. Double lift trying to life steal away at the back there. And now they're gonna go back onto Baron. It is double lift, the only man alive. And it's now Vulcan with the Baron five man standing, pushing up mid. But it wasn't enough to get him out of the bottom too. In week 7, Vulcan went 0 and 3. Changes was needed to keep Vulcan out of the bottom of the standings. Vulcan lacked a clear shot call, and without this, Vulcan couldn't maintain the pace of controlling the game and taking objectives, kills, or towers. On April 3rd, before week 8, Vulcan acquired GGU's Bloodwater to replace Muffin Cutie at support. For the record, there wasn't anything glaringly wrong with Muffin Cutie. From all the interviews with the players, Muffin Cutie had the most outgoing personality at the time. Bloodwater was just the solution to Vulcan's communication errors. He was a shot caller and he had done better performance wise than Muffin Cutie. This gamble to take Bloodwater paid massive dividends. Vulcan won 5 of their remaining 8 games, including a base race with Team Dignitas. Gonna happen, it looks like we're gonna go for the base race. They are, okay, the red turret has gone down, and here we go, Dignitas are looking to kill off the inhibitor. This is going to be going, the turrets are gone on both sides, and here we go, onto the nexus for both sides. Crumbs hitting onto this first nexus turret, down to half health, but the other side is already falling. Look at it down at the bottom of the screen, the turret's almost equal. They're both gonna be no onto the nexus, who's gonna get it first? You can see the health bars dropping down, who's it going to be? It's going to be Vulcan taking down the nexus! It was Bloodwater that called the base race that they won by only one second. Overall, Vulcan improved significantly and went from 7th to 5th place in the end of the split, qualifying for the spring playoffs. They would be against Counterlogic Gaming in a best of 3. Loser would face the chance of being relegated. Rather than a massive throw or a complete shutout, this best of 3 was quite competitive. First game went to Vulcan, thanks to Tristana being handed over to Zuna and X Smithy ganking bot lane, shutting Double Lift down. In the second game, CLG took the lead in the early game and kept it until they won. In the third game, Vulcan completely dominated and ended the game with a 16,000 gold lead and a very fed Mad Cloud. This match marks when Vulcan was able to shatter the standards of the top 4 teams of the series. Next day, Vulcan faced TSM. Since Vulcan spent most of their time prepping for Counterlogic Gaming, they were not ready at all for this game. Zuna's post-game interview says it all. And I mean, you guys do face TSM tomorrow. Do you have any initial thoughts of like what you guys are going to do to prepare for that one? <laughs> I think if anything, we're going to celebrate today, wake up tomorrow, and then be like, all right, we got to beat TSM now. And then we'll prep for just however we got in the morning. Vulcan was able to secure one game in the series, but TSM moves on. Vulcan then faced Curse for 3rd place and $15,000. Vulcan attempted to do a roll swap for game 1, 
putting Xuna at top, Psycho Sid in the jungle, Xmithy in mid, and Manclad on AD carry. This is reminiscent to the last game of the Spring Split also against Curse, where they pulled off this ridiculous role swap, which led to the community claiming both teams intentionally threw. Anywho, Vulcan lost game 1. In game 2, Vulcan's team comp scaled well into the late game and they came back. In the third and final showdown, Vulcan had full control and gold lead the entire game. Vulcan finished the Spring Split playoffs in third place, higher than three of the top four teams. In between the Spring and Summer Split, Vulcan remained quiet while other teams went through massive changes in their roster. Vulcan obtained a new partnership and renamed themselves Vulcan Tech Bargains. They also obtained a kick-ass logo made by a fan from Reddit. Vulcan was determined to improve and qualify for Worlds in September. The Summer Split was the best showing for the team. In Week 1, Vulcan went 3-2 and, and ended in 2nd place, tying with two other teams, Coast and Team Solo Mid. Vulcan would remain at 2nd place for the entire Summer Split. Vulcan excelled in utilizing a late game team comp and adapting to the meta at the time. Zuno would always prefer a hyper carry such as Tristana and Kogma. Whenever Tristana gets banned or their opponent has a team comp that counters an AD carry with no escape, Zuno would usually lock in Caitlyn. Bloodwater opted for Sona or Zyra to maintain aggressiveness and protect Zuna's hyper carries when possible. Bloodwater's well known play of the summer is when he was able to steal Baron using Janna and a level 1 tornado against Cloud9. Off the time, oh, the ultimate goes across. He gets out with 100 HP. The Baron, are you oh kidding me? Oh, Bloodwater steals Baron with a. I don't even know what to with say. With a rank 1 tornado. That thing does 90 damage. Mandatory Cloud had a very diverse champion pool. In the summer, he favored Zed, Twisted Fate, and Rise. Man Cloud couldn't be banned out. At the moment, he and Reckless holds the record for the most kills during an entire LCS split. Xmithy, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated junglers in the series. Ever since their days as Picture of a Goose, Xmithy and Manclad had great synergy whenever there is a gank during the laning phase. Flash is still down. They could be going for Star once again. There's the lockup. They get the pop up as well. Star is not getting any resets on this one, but it's going to take a little bit longer. All right. <laughs> and then he's dead. All right. Here he goes. First blood goes down, and it's going to be Xmithy. The other champions that Xmithy sported was Lee Sin and Evelyn. Psycho Sid plays safe champions that can farm, especially when a lane swap occurs. Because Xmithy is focused on helping Man Cloud at mid, Psycho Sid needs to be reliant on his own play and survivability. He favored Shen so that he has the ability to affect other lanes past level 6. Overall, Vulcan was unstoppable and quite literally too. Vulcan had an 8 game winning streak to end the split, going 5 and 0 in week 9 which was a super week. Xmithy was crowned MVP for week 8 and Mandatory Cloud was crowned MVP of week 9. Vulcan ended the summer split in 2nd place, with 20 wins and 8 losses. It seemed like nothing could stop their momentum of success inside the League of Legends Championship Series. Until this happened. Against Dig, we already 4 0 him in the season, so we knew if we played as bad as we did yesterday, we still would win, so we were really confident. And uh, Beating Dig is probably the best feeling I can get because it would have been nice to beat TSM in the finals, but I tried out top lane for Dig and they didn't want me, so now I knocked him out of Worlds. Feels great. <laughs> Cutie Pie, if he doesn't have Ezreal, he's not a threat on any other hero, so we just abused that fact. <laughs>